The atom bomb is here. It exists. We must look to the future. Up until now, only three have been exploded, and none over the water. It is the duty of the military services to explore the military might of this new weapon. We want to be prepared for any use of atomic energy that may become necessary, whether offensive or defensive. The site of the test will be Bikini Atoll in the Marshalls Group. Bikini is situated in the Marshall Islands. It's uh, between 160 and 170 degrees east longitude. The lagoon is 27 miles uh, long, that is from east to west, and a little more than half of that north to south. Bikini Atoll, 1946. The war in the Pacific had finally come to an end and the Marshall Islands had been liberated by the Americans. For the people of this remote atoll, life was slowly returning to normal after years of starvation at the hands of the Japanese occupiers. Little did they realize, however, that their liberators would soon come to them with a request that was to have lasting consequences. Commodore Wyatt, on behalf of the United States government, went up to Bikini and on behalf of the U.S. government asked the people of Bikini if they'd be willing to move from Bikini uh, for the good of mankind and to end all world wars. And they were going to test these weapons called atomic bombs, which, of course, the biggest weapon the Bikinians had seen up to that point was a gun being fired, so they had no concept of what these weapons were. Well now then, James, will you tell them that the United States government now wants to turn this great destructive force into something good for mankind. And when they were asking the Bikinians to move, these were very tall, strong men these Americans with uniforms and stars and guns and planes in the lagoon. And even though they were asking it like it was a question, uh, the Bikinians were awestruck and basically felt like they didn't have really an option to say yes or no. Of course, they said yes. Well, you know, geez, whatever you guys want to do, we'll do it. Loading all their possessions onto giant U.S. Navy ships, the Bikinians were relocated to the uninhabited island of Rongerik. Bikini was now ready for the greatest show on earth. They chose these first two tests as a big attempt to make a propaganda film. Half the world's supply of motion picture was on Bikini. Motion picture film was on Bikini in 1946. They had 42,000 people. They had thousands upon thousands of radiation recording devices. They had people from all over the world there. They were broadcasting these blasts live on radio. It was a really big show. Everybody in the world knew what was going on in Bikini. They had what would have been the world's sixth largest fleet of ships up there for these tests in an attempt to prove that perhaps nuclear weapons could render the Navy obsolete. Nearly 60 years later, John England has come back to Bikini Atoll. A newly enlisted radio technician 
He watched the explosions in awe. His son Mike reads from his journal. July 25th, 1946, 0840. Explosion occurred. One of the most beautiful sights I have ever seen. Beauty in the sense of power. The first thing one could see was a column of water resembling a wax-dripped candle. And then all of a sudden, at the uppermost part of the column, the water burst into a cloud in the shape of a ring, slowly descending and forming a huge ring surrounding all of the target ships and the atoll. Two thousand and five, Bikini Atoll. In the depths of the lagoon, decaying wrecks lie. Silent testimony to the awesome power of these weapons. Most of the infrastructure on Bikini is related to the dive resort. Simple blocks house guests, and a nice touch is that each room is named after one of the sunken ships. What the island lacks, though, is its original inhabitants. The Bikinians say, we won't go back there until it's like it was in 1946, before the United States got there and started testing these weapons. That's what they owe to us. Now, you could go up there and live there today on Bikini without any problems, as long as you imported the food. The problem for the people of Bikini is twofold when it comes to moving back under those conditions. One is they're afraid if they move back there and start living there and eating all imported food, the United States will forget about them and think the problem is over. And the cleanup had, you know, would not really have been done. And the second issue re revolving around this type of movement back to Bikini is you can't tell kids not to eat a ripened fruit if they see it in front of their faces. That's what they discovered in the 70s because as time went along and they lived there, they kept saying, oh, don't eat so many coconuts and things like that. But the kids you know, they're walking around the island, they see a ripe pandanas or a papaya, and they just eat it. And it would be very hard without a cleanup for the Bikinians to move back because of that reason. So that enables us to have a tourism program on Bikini, but at the same time, the Bikinians can't move back. We're still in the process of lobbying the U.S. government for money to go back to Bik clean Bikini so they can go back, and that's not quite done yet. Diving in Bikini is often thought of as the reserve of advanced technical divers. Yet the requirements to come and dive at Bikini are far less stringent than one might imagine. The, the operation when we began, it started out as a lot of tech divers coming. But we discovered, even though people didn't have all the string of various kind of certification cards, they could still do this diving as long as they were comfortable with their equipment underwater. And we can say that mostly because Bikini is a very tranquil lagoon. It can have up to 100 foot visibilities. We have ascent lines off of every boat. It's 84 degree water, nice warm water. And we have two dive masters in the water at all time. And the most divers that can be in the water at one time are only 11. So it works out fairly well in terms of taking uh, someone who's experienced enough to have confidence in their equipment, but have maybe they've never done a decompression dive. We can take those kind of people. What we have up on Bikini is essentially a nuclear theme park. We have some of the greatest ships uh, in the history of the world up there.
USS Saratoga was the United States' first aircraft carrier. The ship is 900 feet long. It is bigger than the Titanic. People don't understand how big this ship is. You go underwater and you see the Saratoga. I, some, the first time I went down on it, I, I had the image of standing on a street in New York City. I mean, it was so wide and so big. And when you get underneath the bow and see how big that ship is, it really just blows you away. It's, it's, it's surreal. It's so huge. And for someone who's even a wreck diver, who's, who is used to diving on three or 400, even 500 foot long ships and getting in tiny little holes to see the engine room or see these very small parts of the ship, you go in the Saratoga, it's like walking down you know, this huge open building sometimes. There's the, some of the spaces are so wide open, uh, really anybody can penetrate that ship. It's so wide open. We take people in there who have never penetrated a ship before. And that's what makes Bikini such an extraordinary experience because we can take people who have never dove on a wreck or maybe don't even like wreck diving and they get to go on this aircraft carrier and see airplanes in the hangar and and these 500,000 pound bombs that are laying all over the place. It really is an extraordinary experience where people are just used to reef diving and may not even be interested in wrecks because of the dangers involved. And I would say the one thing that kind of separates us from other dive operations is that we, yes, we take you diving, but we also try to give you a history lesson while you're up there. We have very detailed briefings by our dive staff up there. They tell you the history of each of the ships. You learn about the people of Bikini, what happened to them by watching documentaries while you're up there. There have been so many documentaries done about the Bikinians. And so when you leave Bikini, you take away with you not just the diving experience on these extraordinary ships, you take away an understanding about you know, what happened in world history in the 1940s and 50s out on Bikini. You understand you know, what the Bikinians sacrificed. We must select world peace or world destruction.